And yet his own contemporaries heralded him as the man who could change the face of art. Professor Martin Kemp is a renowned world expert who has spent 40 years studying Leonardo and the Renaissance. They would say that Leonardo was what they called in the Renaissance an ingenio, uh, a genius. And yes, he is just the most astonishing figure. I mean, somebody who paints the Mona Lisa, which is the world's most famous picture, must have something going for him. Leonardo's artistic genius is recognized early on. As a boy, he is sent as an apprentice to the workshop of the eminent Verrocchio. Verrocchio is in the great tradition of Florentine multi-skilled artists. He is probably the leading figure in Florence. He trained a number of the major artists, so it was obviously a, a place for a young man to go. And Leonardo's prodigious talent as an artist is soon evident. Early on, he's known as a rising star. He clearly was a, uh, regarded as somebody who was a great talent. And nowhere are Leonardo's extraordinary gifts more clearly illustrated than in his most famous painting of all, the Mona Lisa. Ever since it was stolen in 1911, and the media of the day seized on the story, it has become part of global consciousness, and Leonardo once again propelled into the limelight. In terms of a painting, the Mona Lisa is probably the great summary of what he could do. Pascal Cott is an engineer and inventor who has designed and developed a pioneering system of electronic imaging. He has created a camera that uses a multispectral technique to see every layer in the evolution of this remarkable painting. The camera gives you the capability to see the, the, the sketch of Leonardo. So you can reconstruct the, uh, the story of the painting. Renaissance pictures are very layered things. They're made up layer by layer by layer. And Pascal Cotte's technologies are very powerful at understanding both what's on the surface of the picture, but also using particularly the infrared to look through the surface. Pascal was granted rare access to the Mona Lisa in the Louvre in Paris and allowed to use his cutting-edge technology to investigate the iconic painting's evolution. Here at Pascal's lab in Lumière Technology in Paris are the results of his scans of the Mona Lisa. Pascal has produced a replica of the Mona Lisa and recreated the scanning setup to explain how his state-of-the-art technology works. An average professional camera records around 20 million pixels and the three primary colors, or wavelengths of light. Pascal's camera records 240 million pixels and 13 wavelengths of light, four of which are outside the visual spectrum. So here we have a, a sample of our filter barrel. You can see a set of 13 filters and each filter uh, allows uh, the sensor to see only a narrow bandwidth of light. The sensor scans the entire surface with the first filter. When they are finished, we sweep again with the next filter. The visible spectrum for each of the 240 million pixels is calculated by the camera, creating a vast level of data. The results from Pascal's scans are a complicated series of numbers and graphs. Feeding them back into the computer using software he has specially written, he can recreate virtually the Mona Lisa at every stage of its evolution. Pascal's technology scientifically illustrates the painstaking and complex layering technique Leonardo uses called sfumato. He painted in a very extraordinary way he would take a glaze, that's to say a binder uh, made from oil, and he'd put very little pigment in it. So you have a very thin skin of tinted oil. And that he would put on a white background, so you'd get this thin veil of colour. He then puts another veil of colour on, another veil of colour on. So it's almost as if it's like stained glass. The light goes through the pigment, hits the white background and comes back. The scans also reveal 
how Leonardo intensifies color by saturation. They show how Leonardo does not simply add black or a darker color into his painting to represent light and shade, but blends layer after layer of color to create the shadows. This method is so skillful, no one has ever successfully emulated it. It is in his painting that Leonardo's true genius is revealed. And whilst he may not have been the groundbreaking inventor history has portrayed him as, the range of subjects found in his notebooks reveal the astounding breadth of his knowledge. They vary in terms of topic from botany to um, astronomy to medicine, um, all the way to um, issues of painting, theory of color, uh, theory of painting, um, to span a kind of wide range of subjects that it's almost um, unheard of, uh, even for the Renaissance. We have the idea that Leonardo is uh, somebody who has received a gift possibly for God or from other, or from nature, that has made him a kind of God or a magician. Even though pop historians have claimed him as their own, almost 500 years after his death, it is Leonardo da Vinci's artistic brilliance which has truly stood the test of time.